So if I want to be led by God, I want to be a leader, I need to have humility because he leads the humble in what is right. Praise God and give him glory. We are again back to just share another portion of what God is willing to reveal on this special occasion. I'm glad you're here with us. We're going to continue with our subject matter of leader shift in leadership. And if you were with us on the last occasion, we were talking about humility and we're going to talk about humility again. Remember, we're looking at this word shape because we're trying to shape leadership. And the S has been for servanthood. The H has been for humility. The A has been for accountability. The P has been for preparation, purpose, productivity. And the E is for encouragement. And again, we're on humility. And our next segment as we move into this will be on accountability. So what I want to do first, I'm going to read a text to you because I believe it'll open up our eyes a little bit about humility. And it's from, it's from Psalms 25 and verse 9. And I'm reading from the King James Version, I believe. And he says, he leads the humble in what is right. I want you to really focus on that. There is a leadership that takes place when we are humble. So it's important that we understand what humility is. Humility is the willingness to be honest, to be true, to be open, to be real, to be yourself, to take uh, a place that you're willing to be coachable, you're willing to repent, you're willing to allow others to give you input, you're willing to take ownership, you're willing to do those things. Humility is huge. Humility means that I don't have a problem with admitting, I don't have a problem with quitting, I don't have a problem with repenting. I don't have a problem with any of those things because humility does that. Humility is so close to submissiveness. It means that I would lay myself down for others because I'm not thinking so much about myself. I'm thinking about another person. Humility is not something that we are born with. Humility is something that we learn and that we incorporate and that we establish. It's a clothing, spiritual clothing that you put on and hopefully you keep on. Amen. Because the opposite, the opposite of humility is pride. Let me say that again. The opposite of humility is pride. And when you are prideful, you're oppositional. When you're prideful, you don't know how to take, you don't know how to take anything anyone has to share with you if it doesn't fit you. When you're prideful, you run away from confession. Listen, you run away from confession. You don't want to confess. When you're prideful, you don't want to admit. When you're prideful, you have an ego. When you're humble, you let others take the front seat because you know it's not about that. But when you're prideful, you want all the popularity. You want all the attention. You don't want any of the responsibility. Listen, you don't want any of the responsibility, but you want all the accolades when you're prideful. Prideful is a very dangerous thing because the Bible says that God hates pride. Wow, that's very deep that God would even use the term, I hate it, I hate it. We talked about hate before. God says he hates pride. And so there is definitely an attraction that we have to recognize towards humility. And again, the text says he leads the humble. He leads the humble. So if I want to be led by God, I want to be a leader, I need to have humility because he leads the humble in what is right. He leads the humble in what is right. So if I'm not humble, chances are, if there is the replacement of that with pride, then I'm not going to be led into what is right. I'm going to be led into some things that are wrong. I'm going to be led into some things that are off. I'm going to be led into some things that are confusing, some things that are very difficult and challenging because I'm not humble. Remember, he leads the humble in what is right and teaches, listen this, Listen to this and teaches the humble his way. You know, I've 
gone to school for many, many years, went through college, went through master's program, and, and virtually I get to a place where I understand that in order for me to teach, I got to be a good student and listen, okay? If I'm falling asleep, if I'm not really aware or attentive to what's going on, if I'm missing the mark and I'm just trying to get by and I'm just trying to find whatever route I can to get through this, I'm probably not going to be very successful. When you are in a place, when somebody is teaching you, you have to have the ability to be open to what is being presented. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to be a teachable student. A teachable student is an open student, a listening student, a attentive student, one who is willing to open up his life and hear what is going to be applied. The Bible says that the humble, he teaches his way. So that means you are able to accept his way when you're humble. Because humility is a part of the heart. Just like pride is a part of the heart. And when we talk about the heart, we're talking about the core of man. The core of man is deep. The core of man deals with that which really makes you the biggest part of who you really are. So if you got a problem with your heart, it's either one or the other. It's either you're dealing with humility and God is trying to shape you and you're allowing that to happen, or it's an issue with pride and you're being resistant and you're being very repulsive and you're being very much somebody that says, I want it to get out and I don't want it to get in, okay? So let's talk about more of this because I think it's important that you understand that the humility that God wants to give you is part of his nature. <laughs> it's the nature of God for us to be part of that which resembles God. He is a God of humility. Humility actually is a, is a, is a divine word. It is not natural for the world to be humble. Come on, somebody. It's not natural for the world to be humble. It's natural for the world to be prideful. When a baby comes out of her mother's womb or he, the first thing that they want is what they want. That's pride. You don't have to teach a baby to be prideful. A baby will do that coming right out of the mom's womb. We have to teach humility. You don't have to teach pride. They'll get that from the world. And we have to understand that when I talk about the world, I'm not talking about the birds and the bees and the flowers and the trees. I'm talking about, as the Bible talks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, that there is a spirit over the world, that there is a presence of the spirit over the world that is trying to seduce and is trying to manipulate people in a way that virtually introduces it to you and gives to you nothing but the saturation of pride. And we've got to have a wake up call because many of us who are leaders, whether we know it or not, we may need to look in the mirror and ask, them, and ask ourselves, am I operating in pride or am I operating in humility? You know, a couple, couple of our sessions ago, I made a huge boo-boo in presenting the information that I was going to present. And I told my videographer, don't change it because I want to use it so that people will understand I'm not perfect. I'm a man. And I'm going to show that my humility is my humility. I didn't mean to make that mistake. It happened. Guess what, folks? We make mistakes. And if you're willing to make a mistake and you're willing to take ownership of that mistake, you have just stepped into the whole realm of humility. So I hope that you take that and consider that because that's what humility is. When the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, it takes humility to do that. It takes humility to do that. Trust the Lord with all your heart. That's everything. So ask yourself, in everything that you do, do you trust the Lord in everything that you do? And lean not on your own understanding. I hear people all the time say, I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move to Houston. I'm going to move to Dallas. I'm tired of this little bitty place where I live at. I don't want to be here anymore. And for those that don't know, I'm in Cape Girardeau, Missouri, which is 100 miles outside of St. Louis. It's a college town for the most part. And I also wanted to just have this, this promo, this, this, this timeout pause, if you will, for my buddy who is Ken Murphy, who is actually establishing a brand new Ziggy's Coffee 
And I want to just give him some props because he is one of the individuals that I'm talking about that has what virtually you need in order to grow in an organization. Humility. This man has gone through a number of different things in his life. And he is willing to admit all of his flaws, all of his past, all of his failures in order to show us all of what God is doing in his life. That, to me, is a real man. And I want to express to you in closing that if you have the opportunity, I want you to read James 4. I'm not going to read it for you, so you're going to have to read it. But I'm going to tell you, because my time is limited, James 4 verses 4 through 10 that here are the seven things that really highlight humility. Number one, there is power in humility. Number two, it's a choice to be humble. Number three, grace follows humility. Number four, Satan hates humility. Number five, humility cures worldliness. Wow, that's deep. Number six, being submissive or humble to God and one another creates a realm, a realm of humility. And number seven, humility is under the mighty hand of God. I've just given you seven things that you can reference from James chapter four, verses four through 10, about what humility will do for anyone who is considering leadership. Because without leadership, the shape is off. Without leadership, you're not going to be the leader you can be in the place of humility. May God bless you and may you continue to understand that all of us were created to be a blessing. Amen. <music>